Hi again everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. By most macro measures, 2022 has been a fairly terrible year for many in regards to performance of assets. And as we draw to a close the year that was 2022, and many of my friends in the Northern Hemisphere look at some potential tax loss harvesting moves with their portfolio, I thought I would do a video that was a little reflective of some of the winning moves I had this year uh, with my investing. While this might come across as a bit of a brag, I am more concerned with discussing what worked well and what I learned from each of these situations. As this channel was generally aligned with topics around finance and investing, I think such lessons could be helpful to others. Uh, depending on how this video goes, I may also do a video looking at perhaps three of my biggest losers from the year for the same reason of education. We'll see how we go. Anyway, let's get into it. So. The three successes I'm going to present are all in different contexts and I'm not going to present them in any particular order, but to me, I feel they were among my smarter investing moves in 2022. The first move I'm going to talk about is the sale of half of my Tesla stock position, ticker symbol TSLA if you don't know. Um, so around the time Tesla released their Q3 earnings, given that these were the first set in a while that had cast a bit of shadow on the EV company's meteoric rise, I had made the decision to sell off half of the position despite still strong retail interest in the stock. This turned out to be quite fortuitous as the stock went on to fall by about 50% in the roughly three month period that has preceded. Uh, while a lot of this decline in the stock price was outside of my initial reasoning to sell the stock, as much of the decline has happened due to Elon Musk having sold a larger position in his stock to fund his Twitter takeover, despite assuring Tesla stockholders that he would not sell any more stock this year after initially liquidating a fair bit to fund his initial stake in Twitter. I think the Elon Musk sell-off catalyst has helped drive home a lot of my initial reasoning for wanting to trim the position, however. Now, admittedly, my overall position in Tesla was not a huge one, but it was one that I had held for a few years and saw a number of the shares I own multiply through two stock splits, and the overall value grew several times over. So it has been quite a well-performing share. As has been well-documented, Tesla's stock has been on an absolute tear, even while the broader market had started to sour this year. Tesla's ability to hold out for so long this year, I think, is in part due to the strong retail interest in the stock that I just mentioned. Uh, when deciding to sell the stock, however, I had a real feeling it was quite overpriced in terms of earnings multiples when compared to other automakers. Uh, there were also general trends in the car make industry of a slowdown, uh, which to me made a lot of sense given the high inflation period we were navigating, so less people would be looking to buy new vehicles. The final factor that contributed to my decision to sell half of uh, my holding in Tesla stock was that I believe Tesla is now increasingly facing more market competition from rival automakers in the EV space, which they uh, previously had a bit of a monopoly over. Many of these other automakers, I believe, actually have raw facilities in place to be able to outscale Tesla in terms of production capacity if they are able to find a winning EV vehicle to scale in the market. Hence, give me something to think about in terms of Tesla's ability to remain dominant in that space longer term. Um, I think there was a good lesson here at being able to see through retail hype around a stock and being willing to cash out when the time was right. I do want to say that I don't think Tesla is any long-term trouble as a business and I still have faith in the company um, at being able to turn its market performance around in the near future, particularly when macro factors start to turn more in their favour. I think a few conditions I will be looking for in terms of this sector and Tesla's stock turnaround are a reverse in monetary policy by particularly the US Fed, as this will be a sign that inflation has been tamed in their eyes and they are again trying to encourage retail spending so more people will be out looking to buy an EV car. Uh, the other development that I will be looking for is a further loosening of COVID-related government sanctions and a return to more normalised market activity in China, which has also proved to be a further bottleneck for the company. And looking forward with their reduced factory operations in the next few months ahead, uh, may still be some months away to that normalization. Anyway, moving away from Tesla, the next move I want to mention in regards to my winners for 2022 is a real estate move I made this year. Now, before the extent of inflation and the suppression on property prices were known, I already had a plan to buy another investment property this year. However, the way market conditions have panned out, this has perhaps been dollar-wise the best move I have made in 2022. Although on a side note, the overall performance of my properties has probably gone down, but this one I think I did particularly well on. So this year in July, I purchased a two-bedroom, two-bathroom unit in one of Melbourne's most sought-after suburbs for $560,000. 
The sale price on the unit was originally $630,000 and it had been sold in 2012 for $620,000. So the owners were expecting to have to take a financial haircut on the sale of this property. And I had found out from the real estate agent that the sale of the property was necessary by the owners, not out of financial distress, but to secure another investment property. This was probably not a good move by the agent to divulge this information as I knew the owners needed to sell. There had been initially a bit of interest in the property, but it sounded like nobody was putting in offers. Uh, such was the level of fear about buying into property in a falling market. After a few weeks on the market, I initially offered $550,000, which was knocked back for doing so for being too low. Um, however, about a week later, I put in a revised offer of $560,000, which was accepted. So I had secured the property for about $60,000 less than it had previously been bought for 10 years earlier, despite nothing really being too wrong with the property. Further vindication for my purchase came in November when another unit in the same building with one less bathroom sold for $680,000. Given the extra bathroom and arguably a slightly better positioning my unit had on the building floor plan, it made me feel like I could potentially sell the property for around $700,000 after a few minor cosmetic upgrades. So in my mind, I've built about $140,000 in equity just from my low ball purchase. Um, the other upside of this deal was that there is currently a tight rental market which has pushed prices back up to around where they were pre-COVID. So given the high interest rates at the moment, it has made holding this property a lot easier due to the strong rental yield I am currently getting from it. This moves me on to my final victory for the year, which is purchasing a number of energy and mining stocks on the Australian Stock Exchange or ASX. Living in Australia, approximately 75% of my securities investing is in Australian listed shares and index funds. Uh, historically, the ASX has been a bit more of a contrarian yet defensive uh, index when it is compared to many other major overseas markets, and that can be seen with the year-to-date dropping of the ASX as being only about 7% versus the 20% experienced on the S&P 500, the 33% experienced on the NASDAQ, and the 12% on the German DAX, which is the other market I like to invest in. Um, the ASX 200 index is dominated by mining, energy, and big bank stocks, which have had major macro catalysts bend in their favor. Firstly, the banks are still yet to fully realize the increased level of gains from being able to jack up their interest rates on their borrowers, which will probably feed through into next year. Secondly, Australian mining and energy stocks, which generally compete with other major resource leaning economies such as Canada and of particular importance this year was that of Russia. As a result, these stocks have performed quite well this year um, due to restrictions on Russian products and the effects this has had on the global supply chain. Three of my picks that have been quite pleasing this year include, firstly, AGL, which is Australia's largest retail energy company. Uh, I had been accruing this stock since last year as the stock had had a huge fall in price and was sitting in territory where the share price was actually below the tangible asset value um, attached to the stock. And the stock has a long running stable dividend. Not only has the company continued to pay a very healthy dividend, it has also managed to regain 30% of its value in this year. Um, so I, I feel like adding, the fact that I kept adding to this stock was one of my better moves on the ASX. Um, secondly, Fortescue Metals, ticker symbol FMG, is Australia's third largest mining stock. I had been incurring this one again for some time before, um, and I have continued to do th so through this year. Iron ore has had a good year as demand for steel for building projects has continued to bottleneck, which has continued to push up and sustain elevated prices for one of its key ingredients, iron ore. As such, it has been a modestly good year for Fortescue Metals, uh, putting on about 19%. The final ASX stock I want to mention, and I have saved the best for last, at least in terms of percentage gain, that being Whitehaven Coal or ticker symbol WHC. Whitehaven Coal had attracted my eye in 2021 when I realized uh, it had been trading lower than its net asset value. And when the energy crisis centered around Russia started, I expected there to be a general increase in prices of electricity generation, as well as, of course, um, coal and oil stocks who provide the raw materials for energy. In my mind, I had believed Whitehaven Coal to have been an underpriced coal miner with a decent dividend. So I bought a position late February for around $3.20 per share just after the conflict had kicked off. As a result of the macro factors and quite good company performance this year, um, the stock has actually increased 237% in price terms year to date. 
Uh, my position, while only being a modest sized one, uh, has gained about 190% in terms of its value, while still paying a very strong and larger than normal dividend this year. This position I'm actually thinking of selling fairly soon as I think it has run its course in terms of how high it might go at the moment. Plus there are a number of other stocks that I have been looking at which I think have been beaten down and are ripe for a bit of a turnaround hopefully in 2023 which I'll be looking to put this money into. Now while these three stocks are only a few of the winners I picked out to talk about from this year, it is worth knowing that my overall portfolio is still down, largely due to a bad year for indexes in general. However, having the diversified portfolio has allowed me to hold some balance. Furthermore, my instinct to go after energy and resource stocks in the early days of the Russia-Ukraine conflict has been particularly vindicated with these three choices punctuating the performance of some of my portfolio wins this year. Uh, with these three strong performers I have discussed, I have previously spent time researching and in some cases accruing the stocks before this year, so they were not blind picks in the sector. They were companies that I knew a bit about. So there is also a bit of a lesson here about doing your own research and understanding the companies and the conditions those companies face. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Uh, we'll see how I go, but I may try and do a three losers video um, if I have time, like I indicated at the start, um, as I think there are also insights to be gained from where I could have handled the situation better to learn from and you know, hopefully it's useful for you people too. Let me know if you'd like to see me do some sort of video like that in the comments. Um, also, let me know if you had any particular good financial performances here. I'd love to hear about it. Till next time, everyone, may the markets trade in your favour. Happy New Year. Cheers.